Welcome guys, my name's Taylor, and today we're gonna be learning how to make a picture frame loop in After Effects. After Effects is definitely a harder program off the jump, but you can do this, I promise. This is not going to be the easiest tutorial, so I'm starting out with something that I think is really fun, but also requires a little more knowledge, and I'm gonna be doing a lot more tutorials that are definitely at an easier level. If this feels a little bit beyond your pay grade, don't worry, there's gonna be more content to come. All right, so, what are we doing today? Today, we're making a loop. Loops are like the best. Man, loops are so hard to pull off correctly. Getting down that creative process of understanding how to make that infinite is something that takes a lot of extra detail and will definitely give you an appreciation for how much time your favorite creators are spending on a loop for Instagram. So the other day I was watching a video from another creator who was reviewing After Effects videos. And I was like, I haven't made an After Effects video in a while. Let's do that. So the first main thing is shooting. So full disclosure, I actually made a mistake in this shoe and I think it's something we all can learn from. A big piece of this tracking stuff, especially when you're trying to put things in the frame or attach things to yourself while you're moving, is tracking. And tracking can be really, really tricky. I mean, I've been doing it for a while and I still make a ton of mistakes. The biggest thing is making sure that the surface you're using is something that After Effects can see, interpret, and follow throughout the scene. The mistake that I made in the footage you're watching right now is I had the green screen right, but what I messed up was I forgot to put any tracking points on that green screen. Now this is a real rookie move and shows just how rusty I am, but adding those tracking points would have saved me a lot of time in After Effects. I'm playing a time lapse right now of me trying to track this object, and you can get a feel for how much time I spent attempting to track this object. The real kicker though is getting out of After Effects tracking and using Mocha. Mocha is something that a friend of mine a while back told me I had to learn and I didn't listen. And I'm here to tell you that if you do any kind of tracking in After Effects, you need to learn Mocha. It's typically much better in tracking surfaces and especially if you've got something that's a clear cut surface, you're gonna be able to track much faster. It can save you hours of time in post. All right, so the creation of the prop. Me and Kat just went to a Blick store and we just got a frame and some green paper and then just moved the glass out of the frame and put the paper up front. Now Kat almost let me leave the glass in front and that tells you exactly how much I still have to learn with this stuff. She had a really good idea about the glare and she was super dead on. That glare can be very tricky in post. For this project, it wasn't vital, but when you're thinking about how you're going to green screen an effect, it's really important to think about any kind of material that would be between the green paper and what the camera's gonna see. Okay, so you've gone out, you've shot the footage, and you've got some kind of tile or circle that you want to loop your footage through. Now the first thing is you wanna get this track right. So as you're going through your footage, you want to make sure that your track is entirely surrounding the object in Mocha. And then as it goes through the scene, you wanna make sure that it follows correctly. At the end of the day though, this track is going to be the basis for the effect. And without the track, you can't build anything on it. All right, so you've done your track, you've messed around with Mocha, you set up the correct points. What happens next? Once you've got your track, you're going to want to put a shape that will be the key mover for that entire process. So that shape is going to be what you parent to and then you can parent everything under that shape to make it move easier. I'm not an expert. I actually have no idea why I wasn't able to immediately apply that track to the footage. But once I did, it made it very difficult. I have a feeling it has something to do with scale, but if you're an expert in After Effects and you know why this happened, let me know in the comments. What you're trying to do now is creating the exact same frame at the end that you're gonna see in the very beginning. This is gonna feel really confusing because sometimes you have to go multiple levels down inside of the frames to make the pictures on both sides look the same. Here's what I mean. I wanted to create the original frame, the starting frame, to look identical to the ending frame. What I had to do here is create the whole sequence, and then as I'm comparing the front and end, I had to make sure that the pictures actually lined up. And there were times where I had changed an effect or gone back and forth, and suddenly they don't match at all that's gonna become really obvious from start to finish. So you're gonna to wanna to look at your ending frame and say, okay, what do I need to change here? And slowly tweak things until that frame is almost identical to the front frame. Sometimes you can actually work backwards and start with what the ending frame looks like 
and then create the effect around how you want to get there. For this one, for example, I used an effect called Repetile. Repetile duplicates the frame up and down, and when you use the unfold setting, it's going to blend them relatively seamlessly. Now, I kind of cheated this, as you can see, and it looks a bit wonky once it's sitting in the frame. But the main thing is that it loops and it loops perfectly. The frame at the end is identical to the frame at the beginning. And even though the frame feels a little bit odd when it's sitting in there, it feels perfectly smooth once it goes back through. This is the hard part and you can dial it in a hundred different ways. Okay, so now you've got your track done, you've got your footage in place, and you've dialed in the ending and the starting frame. There's many steps in between here, man. I mean, matching up the beginning and end is the hard part. It's gonna take a lot of messing around with anchor points, position points, and as you can see here, I did a lot of maneuvering to try and figure out how to perfectly match that. The best way to start this process is by using the J and K keys with no layers selected to jump back and forth between the start and end frames. You can set the start and end frames using the keys B and N to kind of jump back between them. Make sure you have all of your layers deselected. All right, so this video is gonna be kind of short. It's my first attempt at doing anything like a tutorial. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. And I hope to create a lot more content around After Effects, Premiere, photography, and filmmaking. If you have feedback for me, drop it in the comment below. Be brutal, I love that. Leave a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you're looking for more content, and I'll see you guys in the next one.